Good day to you, and welcome back to the Baron's News Desk, covering the latest happenings and goings on in the world of tabletop card gaming. Our first story today comes from the Wizards Play Network website, in which the declaration is made that tabletop magic is the biggest it's ever been. The article begins with a proclamation that Dominaria was the best attended pre-release in Magic the Gathering's history, with more than 420,000 players. By June, it was the best attended season ever, with more players joining Friday Night Magic, weekly standard events, and so on, than at any other point since the game debuted. For this anecdote, they did not provide any numbers to back up their claims, so we're going to have to somewhat take their word on this one. Apparently, the snowball kept rolling downhill, as furthermore, they made the proclamation that the Guilds of Ravnica set broke all of the Dominaria records that were set. They claimed that it was a bigger pre-release and had 6% more active players. In fact, more players came to the Ravnica pre-release than came to the Rivals of Ixalan pre-release and Draft Weekend combined. This is excellent news for the game and the Magic the Gathering community at large. Simply put, tabletop magic is the biggest it's ever been. And we're just getting started. Um, wait a mo. They're just now getting started? What have they been doing for the past 25 years? What does getting started actually mean? It is possible that this is just a throwaway sentence and I'm looking a little bit too much into this, but I want to know more. If we truly have hit a zenith of the game's popularity, where do we go from here? How do we attract even more players to Magic the Gathering, and of course, in particular, the Commander format? Will there be even more partnerships between the paper game and the online games such as Magic Online and Magic Arena? Will Magic the Gathering be taking center stage at any prominent conventions? Why, this statement is one big tease from Watsy, therefore I'm hoping that they will not leave this on a cliffhanger for much longer. What are your thoughts? How can Magic the Gathering grow to be even bigger than it is today? Our second story comes from the rumor mill of the subreddit Magic TCG, in which Reddit user Scold177 makes the proclamation that Modern Horizons is expected to sell for around $200 US at most local game shops. He claims that GTS Distribution, which is a company in Everett, Washington, only a stone's throw away from Wizards of the Coast, that booster boxes are going to cost the local game stores around $163 each. He also claims that the boxes will contain 36 booster packs. Now, assuming this is true, that means that booster packs will sell individually for around five to six dollars a piece. Now, do remember that Wizards of the Coast is no longer stating the manufacturer's suggested retail price and therefore is allowing the free market to set its own prices. However, this does raise the question as to why the distributors would be charging this price. Do remember that on the live stream from Wizards of the Coast, they did describe Modern Horizons as an innovation product similar to that of Battle Bond and Conspiracy. If those are the two examples that they are drawing from, then why would the price be hiked so significantly more than those other products? It's especially perplexing considering that there are no significant modern reprints or reprints from modern at all that we know about. Perhaps if the set included reprints of some fetch lands, then that price tag would be warranted. But as a current state of affairs, we know very little as far as to which new cards will be introduced into modern and which will be reprinted older than 8th edition that will make their way into the modern format. This also continues to bar certain players from entering the modern format in general. The modern scene does need a regular drip feed of new players in order to sustain its popularity. With this innovation product, we should not be looking to exclude those that might be interested in playing modern, but simply cannot afford some of the staple cards. 
Now do bear in mind that this is a rumor, and these claims have yet to be substantiated by GTS Distribution themselves. What are your thoughts? Are you willing to spend nearly $200 for a booster box of Modern Horizons at your local game shop? Including, remember, you get that boost buy a box booster promo. Thank you ever so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more news from the Baron's News Desk. Until next time, cheers.